Motorbiking without a license? What has the world come to? Let's find out, we've got something very interesting today. The Yamaha Tricity, or is it Tri-City? Never get the pronunciation right. The Yamaha Tri-City 300. Is it a scooter, a motorbike, a trike? Is it possibly even classed as a car? Let's find out, jump on board, go for a cruise, and see what it's like to ride without a license. Okay guys, very very interesting one, motorcycling without a license. Now okay, when I say without a license, you do need some sort of a license to ride this. I more mainly mean, mainly mean without a motorcycle license. You don't need a motorcycle license to ride this. Due to the front wheels being a certain width apart, it's actually classed as a trike. So you can ride this on a car license, which is very interesting. It's certainly a different looking machine, that's for sure. Under here, there's all sorts going on there. It looks incredibly complicated and clever, but this is going to be very very interesting concept to ride see how it rides what it feels like and how it goes really first off huge thank you to branson motorcycles they do yamaha honda they're down in yeovil in somerset very kind for lending me this machine for the day couldn't turn down the offer really it's a very interesting looking bike is it a bike a trike a car not too sure i'm pretty sure it's classed as a scooter from my professional opinion what we'll do just go for an initial ride see how it is to ride and i have never ridden a trike or a scooter with three wheels whatever we're referring to it as <laughs> so we'll just set off and go for a cruise and i'll go through sort of immediately my thoughts of what it feels like to ride and whether it's easy etc and then we'll go into more specifics about licenses how it works details horsepower figs etc so stay tuned it's a very interesting one what i do know i have done a little bit of research on this machine it's a twist and go so basically it, it is a scooter but it's got those two wheels at the front so it's sort of trike-ish i'm feeling a bit odd <laughs> you get a lot of looks already of <laughs> people looking at you it's just completely normal really i'm trying to get my head around the two front wheels do i steer it like a car or do i steer it like a motorbike oh that's weird <laughs> there's a few little trick gadget let's just call it tricity stick with that word tricity tricity i think it's probably personal preference okay so it's very stable. Immediate thoughts. It's not exactly like a scooter. Well, you can lean it in. You can definitely, I mean, of course you can lean it. The right hand brake is not very strong. I have to say that. You can definitely lean it, but when you're immediately, if you're stopped and coming out of a junction, you can't like use your body to, to coax it round the corner as much as you can on an ordinary two-wheeled scooter or a motorbike. But initial impressions, it's, uh, yeah, it may look different and slightly weird concept and in, not intimidating, but strange. But uh, it's really easy to ride, a lot easier than a scooter. I think even if you've never ridden a motorbike, just the tiny bit we've done here, just in town, just going in a straight line and the odd junction, I mean, you just take your hands off the wheel it's very easy it's a twist and go scooter isn't it it's just a lot more stable okay so you can I'm just thinking what it was like in traffic there like filtering because it's not a there's so much to say about this it's not a scooter is it but it's not a car so is it complete misconcept where it's not useful or is it actually quite useful yeah so the front brakes they're not weak but they're not great but actually if you yank on the left one they're very good so you've got a nice option there you've got three brakes you've got a left hand here right hand which i believe is the front and then a foot brake which is the rear which is right for slow maneuvers but the one you want to be using is the left hand brake because that uses all of the brakes front and rear oh it leans in <laughs> it's quite fun there of course this being a trike it's got you know it's got two front wheels and it's got brakes on every wheel so effectively you've got an extra set of brakes than your ordinary motorcycle so speed wise jesus 300 cc single cylinder engine and i'm going 65 miles an hour absolutely no problem at all it doesn't feel like it's straining one bit really doesn't it's very smooth may be quite obvious but i can say the wind protection is considerably better than on most motorbikes at uh, highway speeds right let's uh get to a town and see what she's like around town 
So I just realized, hope you can hear me, it's quite windy. I wasn't even concentrating. <laughs> I was just going 75 miles an hour. No problem at all. Just sort of looking around at the fields and enjoying the scenery. <laughs> I have to get that in there before we get to town. You don't need a bike motorbike license. It's really, really easy to ride. A very, very smooth engine. Okay, so a little bit of town riding. See what the Tristy 300's like. It's a V-belt belt transmission, so basically it's just a twist and go throttle. So in town it, it, it's very reminiscent, I mean almost identical to a scooter transmission wise. You just roll on, no need for clutch and gears, literally nothing by your feet apart from the rear brake. Twist and go, very very simple, so no worries about stalling it if you've never ridden a motorbike before or anything like that. Yeah, I mean obviously it is a fair bit wider than a two-wheeled scooter or motorcycle, but then on that matter it is a lot thinner more so than it is wider if you see what i mean than a than a car this is 850 millimeters overall width at its widest point and your average car is just below 2000 millimeters two meters this is considerably thinner than a car if i'm being honest my main thing when i see these is like okay i understand it for town but is it really here you go I've just done two cars there, it wasn't really necessary, but just to show you the uh, capabilities of it. Uh, you can go on the inside there. Is it really, really that much more beneficial than a car? You know, it's quite wide, but... Oh, dogfight. In all honesty, I can say it's good for, for in-town riding and for instance city. You're much more, you can definitely filter on this definitely make much quicker progress than you can in a car and then there's the parking as well you, whether this is classed as a motorbike and you can park in motorbiking places by the law i don't know but i don't think anyone's going to uh, take a second look or question you and say that's not a motorcycle sir you can't park that there parking wise it's a fair bit better than a car as well i mean i'm riding it like a motorbike i'm just looking straight for the opportunities to overtake other cars I mean, some busy road up here immediately going for the overtakes it's it's really good definitely better than cars for filtering and there's the added bonus let's turn around here oh, it's good steering lock oh i tell you one thing that would be good reverse gear i'm afraid it doesn't have a reverse gear that would be a nice touch but the one thing better for filtering in town if you're not used to riding a motorbike is obviously the two front wheels it's so much more stable when you're at slow speeds so you do have to put your feet down if you stop it's not going to stay up by itself but it is a lot more stable than two wheels however the Tristy 300 and the Tristy 125 have a little bit of a trick up their sleeve and we shall demonstrate that just up here. This is the best place I can find. Oh no, I have to stop, but I don't want to put my feet down. Hello Tristy, this button here. Look at that, hands off feet in the air no cars behind me there's just one button on the left here it's called the standing assist yamaha are calling it and as you pull up to the lights or a junction like this where i don't need to be stopping at all but i'm doing it for demonstration purposes you can just press that button and it basically locks the um the front two wheels it'll go into more depth in it in a bit it doesn't lock the suspension etc so when you want to go roll onto the throttle and it automatically disables the um, stand assist and you just start moving again and you're back into riding. So that's a really cool feature, which um, I believe at the moment just Yamaha are doing on their Tristies. There's the Piaggio MP3. It does do that, but it does it in a slightly different way where the the Piaggio actually locks the suspension and the steering. So you're, you're literally bolted in whereas this Yamaha is a, I think a better system it only locks the parallelogram big word not the suspension and steering so you can still feel the suspension and you can still steer which is which is good all right this looks like a nice place to stop let's have a little talk around more of the figures and more in depth um, let's demonstrate that stand assist again you get a nice beep look I'm rolling backwards with it on that's strange but you just a brake and I'm um, completely no feet and then as I roll on the throttle it comes off immediately and it's not bad but just you would want to be aware when you do come on the throttle that immediately it's it's tilting again but it's not a problem it's also got a standard side stand as well which cuts the engine I've just found out when you put it down so guys the Tristy 300 retails at 8,000 
100 pounds and it's a 292 actually cc single piston engine um, with obviously as i was saying the automatic just twist and go throttle gearbox it has 28 brake horsepower and 29 newton meters of torque which for me in terms of i'm not willy waving <laughs> um so you want of a better term but in terms of motorbikes that doesn't sound like a lot of power and cars even less but as you saw earlier it's just on the dual carriageway there and honestly i wasn't was, was hardly even thinking i didn't even notice and i was going 70 miles an hour just look i was just looking at the fields relaxing turn around look at the speed and i'm going 75 miles an hour actually I and mean, it was really smooth and the wind protection's really very very good better than most motorbikes because it's just so wide good power wise and a nice motor very very smooth great for in town and you can definitely take it on um, dual carriageways and motorways no problem at all so price wise how can i say this i think eight thousand one hundred pounds is on the pricier side for a scooter but then you look at the size of it in the flesh it's a quite a substantial thing it's not just like a 50 cc 125 scooter it's a proper piece of engineering we take a look under the front in a minute the suspension and parallelogram that's holding the, the two wheels together it's all very complicated technology but it's very clever so yeah it's eight eight thousand one hundred pounds but if you look at the competition which really there's not that much you've got the tristy yamaha tristy 125 and that comes in at four thousand two hundred and one pounds so pretty much half the price for very similar machine just with a smaller engine that's where i start to question the the price of this hands up i haven't ridden the 125 so i, I can't say whether it is is as capable as this machine. So the other competition is the Piaggio MP3 Sport, which is £7,250. Again, full disclosure, I haven't ridden that machine either, but from, from the research I've done on them, this does seem to have a few more tricks up its sleeve, so to speak, that may help it trump the Piaggio. So yeah, that extra, extra, what, six, seven hundred pounds may be worth, may be worth spending on it. Okay guys, so, take her off a stand seat height it's 795 millimeters bearing in mind it is quite a wide seat on it i'm nine foot nine foot five five foot nine and i can flat foot it just about but yeah the the seat's very comfortable for in town if you need to put a leg down but with that uh stand assist you you don't need to put a leg down effectively so the seat height is very good now one thing to mention whether you are a motorcycle rider or you're a car driver it weighs 239 240 kilograms which is heavy for a motorbike that's like a big that's a gs big adventure style mot motorcycle weight if you're coming from a car that's incredibly light and in town it, the weight doesn't affect how easy it is to ride doesn't really affect the practicality of it bar if you're doing a u-turn it can be a little tricky to walk it backwards because it doesn't have a reverse gear that's one one issue with it but other than that the weight's not a problem you've got the two front wheels that give you the extra extra balance so guys on to a slightly complicated bit the suspension at the front it's not that complicated. It's a double telescopic fork with 100 millimeters of travel. And obviously you've got one for each each wheel. And yeah, I mean, the suspension, it's not, excuse the pun, it's not groundbreaking. It's not an absolutely incredible suspension, but there's nothing wrong with it. If you if you hit a bump, it is slightly clunky. If we're comparing it to other scooters, it's, it's better than other scooters. Yeah, so that's a bit of a roundabout way of saying it. It's not really flashy Olin's motorcycle suspension, but having two sets of it with the front wheels up front, it is quite pliable up front, but on the rear, you can feel potholes when you go over them. So the rear suspension, suspension is a unit spring two of them on the rear there uh, with 84 millimeters of travel okay guys so onto the brakes um, we'll go for the front and the rear so you've got a 265 millimeter single disc but on each wheel on the bike so you have three of them one on the rear obviously and and two on the front makes sense <laughs> um, but yeah it's a Nissan caliper and the brakes are really interesting on this bike I was finding them a little bit not so great and then sort of finding them really good we'll just go over them quickly I'll show you on the on the bike now now up front here you've got two brakes right hand and left hand 
hand. Well, as far as I can tell, the, well, it is. The right hand brake is the front brakes, where the left hand, which is good, the right hand brake is, is nice. It's definitely far from snappy. It's actually quite slow, but when you pull on it, it does bring you to a stop, but relatively slowly. Whereas the left brake is, again, it's not snappy at all, but the left brake is applying the brakes on all three wheels. And it's not snappy at all, it's actually quite slow progressive, but when you, I'll do it in a second to demonstrate, when you yank on it, on the road, it brings you to a big stop. It's, uh, it's quite reassuring. Alright guys, so let's jump back on and go for a ride and see what she's like on some more sort of twistier, faster roads. See how she handles. First off, can't do a scooter review without checking what storage under the seat is like. You've got two buttons here on the left, fuel on the right, seat. Right, so I was struggling to open the seat there and the fuel cap, but it's actually quite straightforward. You've got your ignition key here, two buttons. Switch it across to open, and then you press, press the seat button, and there's your seat, seat opens. You can fit two full face helmets in here, and that's a lot of storage, that is luxury. Um, it's just got a few gubbins there, but fit a fair amount of shopping in there as well. You can optionally get a rack for the back as well with a top box so you can fit even more luggage in there um, your fuel cap just a button here on the left press fuel and there you go she pops up you can top her up there then you switch the ignition one more around to the right to on turn her on and we're good to go let's test the uh, stand assist so i'm just going to stop here for you press the button should beep, yeah. Come to a stop. Oh my god, it's nerve wracking. Yeah, and it's absolutely fine. It doesn't break the wheels, so if you're on an incline, it'll roll. Just have to dab the brake and hold that. But as soon as I come on the throttle, there's a yellow light here. You should see that go out, and then you're you're no longer being supported, so to speak. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That comes off quite quickly. Admittedly, you probably shouldn't do it with a bush straight ahead of you, but yeah, just something to be aware of if you're at the lights. But turning wise, just in this car park, it's so easy, but it, it, it does have a motorbike feel to it. It's weird. Let's just go up some uh, so, so country roads here and go a little bit faster. See if she's any fun on, on some sort of country lanes, really. You get that motorbike feel. Full on the throttle now. Oh, yes. Weird. You can be really accurate with the steering because it really doesn't take any skill. It's got plenty of power, plenty of power. And you're not going to be breaking any records, but I mean, plenty of power to keep up with traffic. So around the corners, it is motorbike-esque feeling. You're just so much more sturdy. It doesn't really require any skill. Now, you don't need a, light, a motorbike license to, to ride one of these on the English roads. Rules may vary in different countries, so be sure to check that. It's relaxing out on these roads. You're not going to have a blast on it. I don't think it's quick enough, but it's very relaxing. We'll round off the video with a conclusion. I think in town, a very interesting uh, proposition. I personally would just buy a scooter because I prefer two wheels. I just, I just prefer it. I find it more fun. But Yamaha are aiming this at car drivers, really to convert them to getting one of these that's just so much more practical for in town and cities. I think it's a really good idea. Personally, I'm not a massive fan of the looks, to put it nicely. You know, looks are subjective. Yeah, but for in town, I get so fr I often, I'm in London quite a lot, and I get so frustrated with uh, how many cars there are and how they're just not going anywhere. There's literally people sitting there in their cars in traffic. It's the same in a lot of cities, just not even moving, with fumes spilling out the back, clogging up the roads with one person sitting in the car. It's just like, it's such a waste. And a vehicle like this can help to get people out of their cars onto smaller vehicles. Because I understand a scooter may be too big a step for some people because you have to get your CBT license and you do have to learn how to ride a motorbike. It's not hard, but some people just won't want to do it. But one of these, you can go get one now. If you live in the city, ditch your car, Go and get one of these, sell your car, maybe have a bit of change left, get one of these for eight grand. And it's fantastic in the city, it's very easy to ride, 
It's got a lot of storage room. I mean, let's be honest, how often do you have four people in your car in the city? If you want to go out of the city, it's got plenty of wind protection, plenty of speed for on the dual carriageway. It's one to think about, guys. One to think about if you don't have your motorbike license. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you like the video, team. Country roads riding, it's completely capable enough. I'm just chilling here, really sitting here, chilling one-handed. Sorry, a lot of, I shouldn't do that. Should always be two-handed on a motorbike. But yeah, really easy, keeping up with traffic, corners are nice it's a nice sunny day i'm chilled out looking at the fields having a splendid time if you like the video please don't forget to subscribe and give the video a thumbs up and i shall see you in the next one ciao bella